This is a special edition of Late Night Health. I'm Mark Allen. We're gonna we're gonna talk to uh, Dr. Christopher Maiklin. Uh He's a powerful uh, uh, channeling medium, uh, psychic healer, and an all-around good guy. And uh, he's based in the uh, I guess the Midwest now. Uh, he comes from <laughs> across the pond, as they say, and we've been talking for a few minutes and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun during the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Um, Christopher, welcome to Late Night Health. Yay, thanks Mark for having me. Such a Our, gentleman, bless my, you my, my pleasure. Uh, what was it like growing up and did you hear voices or did that happen later? I mean... I'm always oh. fascinated by this. <laughs> I know. Well, I remember the, specifically at age of about four, I remember the first encounter with a, a reptilian creature, you know, was actually in my bedroom. And it was by the, at the bottom of the bed and it just, you know, came and, and I, you know, at the age of four, oh my God, you get this really dark feeling. You know, oh, wow, this is not good. You know, dad, dad, you know, and dad comes to go, what's the matter, darling? There's a reptilian in my room. What do you go? where nah you know and i was watching it like, oh wow you know and so and so he's oh get back to bed and the thing was still there of course because it was hanging around and so um so when he'd gone i um i decided okay so i just said get out of my bedroom and it went oh that worked because <laughs> so, i had some power behind me even at that time and uh i learned very quickly that you know i could see craft in the sky i could see a lot of things and that people didn't see and so you have to be very careful about um, how you manage it because, of course, they'll put you on psychological drugs if you're not careful. So I learned to manage it myself. I didn't tell anyone about what I saw and everything else. But then you go through life. And so that was the first encounter. But I've, I've seen many things, you know. Uh, I see earthbound spirits and uh, I also help people with uh, attacks from, you know, uh, different alien beings, uh, the obvious the, the negative ones. And, uh, you know, we clear it and clear houses. And, you know, even over here, there's a lot of Native American spirits. And they get pretty cheesed off, you know, because they take a vow that I'm staying here to look after my land. So you build on our land and you're going to get your plumbing wrecked with and things messed with. And, you know, I remember one lady, she phoned me up and she said, um, I can't sell this house and the plumbing's going mad and all these sort of things. And it was just outside Branson. And anyway, uh, she couldn't sell it at all. I did the mark for six months, so we cleared it, and there was 732, I think, from what I remember, uh, Native American spirits who had died on that, you know, on that area. Oh my! And, and they were all ticked off, and you know, I spent an hour I actually bawled my eyes out because I felt their pain. Anyway, we cleared it and blessed them and thanked them for being here, and moved them on, you know, because it's not useful, obviously, even being here uh, because they're only creating chaos and. It's also not useful to people because they're now built on your land. So anyway, we cleared them and you know blessed them, thank them for the participation in the journey, and um, she sold it within three days. You know, and, and it was clear. So, so there's a lot of Native American, you know, uh, slaughter areas, you know, um, burial grounds and things like that to deal with. You know, uh, in the U.S. So I didn't realize it was so bad until I got here. So it's, it's amazing, but it's nice. I, where I live, where I live here in in Southern California, there were. Uh, lots of Indians, and in fact, uh, not far away in the National Park, there's a little Indian village, and in fact, there's another one uh, a few miles away as well. So wow. I guess they're they're you know this areas that were populated by Native Americans were you know are very are very common. Let let what did you do until you became a a full time and I. I I don't know what else to call it. So I'm going to say psychic, healer, magician. Um, <laughs> Something. <laughs> Something yeah. with it. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, you know, I, I got a degree in electronics at the time, you know, 1986. I mean, that was the thing to get into. And then I got a master's degree in uh, control software systems. I worked with Airbus and I worked with uh, different uh, corporations to do with flight control systems. And, um, and did I enjoy it? No. Nah. You know, I used to go to work for a paycheck and, you know, people, oh my God, you're earning so much money. But I wasn't interested in the money. I was just interested in, there's got to be more to life than this. And then, but then of course, 2000 hit and uh, those jobs weren't, you know, around anymore. And so, um, so I basically started building, uh, I, I was buying houses, refurbishing them and selling them and 
decided to build an apartment block. What a stupid idea. But never mind. I thought it was good at the time. So anyway, <laughs> 173 apartments, way out of my league. But anyway, I borrowed millions of pounds and had some money behind me and we bought this land and it was in Manchester. And I started, uh, you know, doing the design of it and everything else. And then I remember the bank phone and said, you know, this, um, these apartments, you say are worth $220,000. They're now worth ninety because the crash in two thousand and seven. We won our money back, and he got fourteen days to pay it. I thought, oh, I didn't Whoa. have the money, <laughs> so went bankrupt. So everything disappeared, and I was in the middle of Manchester, and you know, I sat in this apartment. Someone lent it to me. Marriage collapsed. A lot of things happened, and I sit there going, God, this is not funny. You know, I had two Walmart bags, you know, with a few clothes in. That was it. You know, for twenty-one years of work, and it's not funny. What's going on? I remember them saying, it's the right time. What do you mean it's the right time? It's the right time, you'll see. And by goodness, it was. I went on a journey and got sponsored by some Knights Templar people in England. Then we went out to uh, India, Gambia, Ghana, you know, different places doing healings and uh, went across Europe. And, you know, I was, it was a good learning curve. And then I spent some time on my own for about two or three years just meditating every day, learning how, if you've got a gift, you've got to learn how it works, you know, and but you had, you had ignored the gift for years then. Yeah, well, I did a little bit of healing, but didn't really understand it. You know, uh, you know, I used to do things, make people feel better and release emotion, but didn't really understand it. It took me about three years, four years of solid meditation, probably four, six hours a day. And they showed me, okay, what causes cancer? Well, for example, pathogenic infections, viruses, Epstein-Barr. Uh, if your vibration drops, it always starts with emotion with cancer. Uh, you know, vibration drops and then, uh, the uh, infections mutate the cells, turn into tumors. So, oh, wow, okay, that makes sense. Leukemia, why does leukemia happen? Well, what happens is, you know, if, you, if your liver function drops below 20%, you know, you're not processing your toxins and your body gets overloaded with toxins, you know, it can't dump it in fat cells. A lot of people who, who get big you know, and put on weight is because the liver's dysfunctional because the body puts the toxins in fat cells, it's got to put it somewhere. And of course, when it gets overloaded, it gets in the stem cells, kills off the stem cells, you've got leukemia. And so we started getting rid of that. And, you know, it's, it, you know, uh, things like arthritis. Um, and then I really started focusing on things like Lyme disease, manufactured diseases, you know, really a Lyme disease, HIV, AIDS, uh, Agent Orange, and also Morgellons, nanoparticles. And people are really sick with this stuff. And it's a pandemic, you know, so I really focused on that and uh you know uh, and moved it forward from there so it's always been a learning curve you know you always learn something you know every week it's amazing but your 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 background your education is science you're you're science, good with, yeah right so how do you how do you take the two halves how do you take that science half and blend it with your spiritual side well, I think you can understand it from the physics aspect of vibrational frequencies. You know, I mean, the body vibrates at the vibration of your cells. Everything's vibrating, even walls, you know, everything. So if you look at it like that, it gives you a good understanding, I think, of, oh, that makes sense. So people say, you know, uh, this concrete wall isn't solid. Well, what do you mean? I can't, you know, if you knock it, you know, but, but it's not. Everything's vibrating. And so, you know, if you, if you tune into a different vibration, you can see through things, you can put your hand through things, you know, molecular structure and, and vibration. So it gives you a good understanding of how it all works. And this, you know, obviously this, this uh, third dimensional world is kind of surreal in a way, you know, it's a, it, 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 we're here in it, but it's all vibrational frequency, you know, so. Do we go away? When we, we live, we pass from this existence, or is it done, or do we oh, continue? No, I mean, you, you, yeah, you continue. I mean, your soul, you know, and again, that's my opinion, your soul, um, and I've seen it because people have a life with you, you know, if you, there's a few types of people who come down here, star seeds, they come down, and why, why they're called star seeds? Well, because they're evolved, and they're supposed to bring things from the ethers and down here, because it's in the third dimension where the strict rules like it's complete free will you know god can't intervene and the uh, angelic beings can't intervene by anything unless you ask them and you're actually down here so um so you know they they volunteer come down here okay god i'll volunteer and then you get down here you think my goodness what was earth was i thinking <laughs> <laughs> i always tell people look next time god wants volunteers just think twice before you come down here <laughs> but actually i love it but i haven't always loved it i mean mark you know i've had times where what you know and i hear it every day you know from clients i don't belong here why am i here what's my purpose and well everyone's got a you know a gift and i think you know it's 
it's all, you know, as, as Stasi people, it's our um, job really to actually help people get back to their sovereign self and get that passion back in life. Because, you know, if you're just going to work and you're Stasi, you're going to get pretty depressed because you're way beyond, you know, going to well, it's, a corporate. It's, it's what you said paycheck. earlier. You were just working for a paycheck. Well, yeah, I didn't enjoy it. Did I enjoy software? No, I did it because it paid money. And, you know, uh, now I love what I do. But, you know, I think with this healing ministry, it's, you know, we work uh, probably do in terms of healings, probably 50 odd thousand healings a year uh, of people we do on groups, specialized groups, one-to-ones. That's a lot of people. But if you can help that many people, then they can move forward and help other people, you know. And all the idea of the guru and everything else to me is just finished. You know, you don't have to follow gurus. You are your own guru. You know, it's just, you've got to get back there. You've got to release enough emotion and, you know, get your vibration up. Because as, you know, I've seen it, as people get their vibration up, they get excited. They're, oh my God, I feel incredible. So you're leaping out of bed in the morning, let's, let's do the day, you know, and you get excited about stuff. But if you're doing something you can't stand, like you're working for a corporation, oh God, I've got to go to work, hate my job, and maybe the marriage isn't so good either. And, you know, you get into this rut of just going to the store, making dinner, going to bed, getting up in the morning, doing a paycheck, going home. And, you know, what's excited about that? That's not giving you passion. That's not life. That's not passion. And passion is important. Finding a purpose in life is, I think, one of the most important things oh. an individual can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why am I here? What the hell is going on? Why am I here? Yeah, right? and some people don't know. You know, to me, you know, your passion and your gift, it comes naturally. You don't need to try. You need to meditate on it, of course. But, for example... In music, there's been some great composers. There's some great people who sing now who channel. And you can always tell it because it's it's magical. You know, what they're doing is absolutely magical. And other people just, you know, go on, America's Got Talent or something. It's just manufactured. But true people with a gift. Same with a chef. You know, you can go into a restaurant. And, uh, you know, for example, if the chef's in a good mood and he's got a passion about his food, you're walking and that food will not just be great. It'll be like the grace of God. And I've done it. And yes. I remember going to one restaurant, you know, with Mandy, my wife, and it was like the grace of God the whole evening. It was like, oh, it's like butter melting your mouth. And yet you go in another time, and maybe the chef's all cheesed off because he had a, you know, he or she had a, an argument with a husband or wife, and the food, the energy in the food's not as good. You know, it tastes okay, but it's not as good. We're it's really it's sensitive. And really as, sensitive. A, as, a, as a foodie, yeah. me, <laughs> right? You know, there are, I think there are only two kinds of people in this world. Okay, they're the kinds of people like me who say, gee, I'm going on a trip in four weeks. I'm going to have this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and do it before I pick the hotel or the, the airlines. I know what I'm going to eat. That's, that's a foodie. Then there are other people who just eat to live. And yeah, I'm I mean, to me, one. it's a passion. I mean, we don't it go is. out hardly anymore because, you know, we even have a restaurant around here. And I know when I go there, sometimes I can get sick because I'm very sensitive. Uh, you know, if, if you've got for example, somebody who's been on meth, who's a sous chef and trying to get back into it, you can smell, I can smell the energy around it. Mm, no, I can't eat that. You know, it's not because the food's bad. It's just because my sensitivity is too high. So I think it's really it's important. And I think you should honor your body as well. You know, you should have, again, getting the passion about food. Uh, I can cook better at home than I can going out for meals here. So why would you go out? You know, what's the point? Because, yeah. you know, a nice glass of wine, you're making dinner for my wife and I and, you know, other people, you know, it's, it's such a joy. I love it. You know. Oh, I do too. I do too. In fact, my passion for food extended, extends so far that our son became a professional chef. Yay. <laughs> Yay. But he doesn't so cook. So we'll pop for... into his house for dinner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on over. Yeah. Um, the uh, finding a purpose. How does somebody find a life purpose. We have a lot to talk about. We'll probably have to have Christopher back uh, in a couple of weeks and do this again because he's got books out. He has a, a number of of um, uh, uh, weekly uh, meditations, it, all kinds of different things. So we we've got a lot to cover, and you know, <laughs> short short period of time. And he laughs a lot which is great. Um, I love life. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. You have a passion for life, for being here. I you know, I, I've thought about this. I like being here. I love I, it. But, I, but I, I've always loved it, but I do now. And that's the thing, you know, you've got to, and so, you know, I see many people, well, you know, I don't get on with my husband. He, he thinks I'm nuts. And, 
Well, you know, I, I encourage people to try and stay married, but don't encourage it if it's going to actually create a fracture and it's going to drag your energy down. And, you know, you've got to make that decision. Do you want to stay with that partner and tread on eggshells and not talk? Or do you want to just be real? You know, and the thing is about me, I'm raw, open and real. I'm honest about things, you know. I see things all the time, like, for example, um, people say, you know, I get people say, oh, well, you know, I went to healers and they said it's a contract with God. Well, for, number one, God doesn't have a lawyer. He doesn't need a lawyer. <laughs> no uh, contract. That's number one. Second one, there is no contract. The Akashic Records have infinite timelines in front of you. You can do anything. For example, you know, you can go on your divine timeline and do healing or music or food or have a passion for plants, animals, whatever you want. Or you can, oh, well, let's rob a bank and go to jail. You know, there's so many infinite timelines. It's your choice. And, and I think by saying, oh, it's a contract with God, you're not showing up for what a mess you made in your life. You know, it's important. And it's not to shame anybody. It's just to, okay, let's transmute that emotion. You're on the wrong path. Let's get on the right one. And once you're on a divine path, everything starts flowing. I hear people say, well, yeah, I'd love to do my gifts, but I can't. <sighs> Where's the money come from? Well, you know, love, you know, money flows where love goes. If you're doing things, you, you get an energy for it. You know, you don't ever have to worry about it. And I think one of the biggest things for me is surrender and, you know, also running a, we're in a spiritual company. We have quite a few staff. It's not a small company. It's, you know, we have, um, you have a load of staff. We have uh, subcontractors, like, for example, accounts. Can't stand accounts. Never want to do them. <laughs> don't want to count the pennies. Don't want to reconcile the bank out non interest. So I pay our accounts at something like twelve, fourteen thousand $14,000 a year. Let's send it to you. You do it. You can upload the figures and do all the stuff. I'm not interested. So, and the IT. Can I do IT? Well, of course, I'm trained in it. Do I want to do it? Uh, no, no. So let's get the IT guy. He comes and fixes the computers and gets the networks going. And in that way, you know, all you're doing is you're doing your passion every day. You're not getting angsty about, well, I can't get the computer fit. I don't know what's wrong with it. You know, I think it's so important to, uh, you know, make sure you, you just do your gift. And, you know, when you do that. Like that gift that you're talking about, how do you find it? Okay. Well, I think and, most, and, is, and, and a lot of people, I would say, well, I know for a fact, 80% plus of the American people, and I'm going to assume the English people and the Canadian people and the French people and the Italian people, all these countries, this huge percentage of the population are unhappy. They're working paycheck to paycheck and they, they don't dislike what they do. They really despise what they do. Yeah, I know. And that's not, not the best. So, you know, my advice to that is and I get people saying that all the time. And, you know, I think what you've got to do is uh, for the first key is finding out what your passion is and your passion is something you're amazing at or you, you're drawn to. Like, for example, I know, uh, I know one person who, who loves flowers and uh, and doing you know landscaping and things like that. Then then let's do it, you know, because if that gives you joy, create a company out of it. Uh, you know, like like you say, chefing. You know, chefing can be a passion. You know, not just churning out gunge. You know, right. creating some massive creation. Like oh my god, that's gorgeous. You know, because you know it's a joy. You know, when I cook, I mean, you know, I'm not a chef, but but I can cook really well and. When people eat the food, they go, wow, this is delicious because, you know, I know enough to to piece things together and get nice, uh, you know, condiments and different things so that, you know. The, the, you, don't cook, really you don't cook the t what, what's known as the typical British fare, then? Uh, no, meat and two mutton, veg. Meat, meat, <laughs> or fish and, meat, two, fish and chips. <laughs> fish and chips, mutton. Um, yeah, mutton. Right. Um, when you're walking down the street with your wife, are you inundated with impressions of people or, or have you learned to be able to control it and and turn it off so to speak i can turn it off i mean i used to go out to restaurants and you'd see some reptilian things around and people attachments to people and oh wow you know and, and if you see all this stuff you think i actually don't want to be here so i've learned to actually shut it down i can switch it on or shut it down <coughs> and um you know i can also do remote viewing i can see people they show me videos inside people's bodies. Oh, your kidneys look a bit sick, or you've got fatty tissue on the liver, or you've got a blockage here, or a tumor there, you know. And, uh, you know, you can check how the tumor's doing. It's it's what we call remote viewing. So, you know, you switch that on, off and on as well. So, uh, but yeah, you, need, you know, I remember someone a long time ago said, wow, all this stuff you can see, it could be shown as a curse or a blessing. And I said, well, it depends how you use it. If you learn to manage your gifts, it could be a blessing. And it's like, you know, schizophrenia. I mean, 
Schizophrenic people are really, really gifted. They can hear things, they can see things, <clears throat> but they don't know what to do with it. And if it's the dark entities, they manipulate. And so it's important to understand what they're doing and uh, learn how to block them out of your life and bring the angelic ones over. And part of that is getting your vibrational. <clears throat> so, you know, we do healings where, you know, we give them energy. We release like 54 releases of the biggest emotion they've got, you know, and uh, there's a technique to do that. Um, you know, you can work on liver and kidneys because most people have adrenal issues because, of course, you know, emotion, it bleeds into the adrenals and it also bleeds into the thyroid. That's part of the endocrine system. So you find that people exhaust all the time, you know, and it's like fibromyalgia, you know. Oh, you got fibromyalgia. Well, that's a daft name for, I don't know what's wrong with you, but, you know, you've got a bit of inflammation, you've got lower back issues, you've got depression, you're exhausted. <clears throat> so if you've got an entity attachment, these entities attached, you know, the anarchy draconians tend to attach in the abdomen. So your abdomen swells up paralyze your intestines so when you eat it goes further down it backs up and you feel blah you know and you get gas. and you work with people you work with people to to help overcome this to to heal oh yeah you know we clear the entities you know we work on them and you know sometimes it takes a bit of time because you know if you, we all ingest i mean if you look at this world we all ingest way too much emotion that's why everyone's sick i think because their vibrations are low and they're depressed and people are antidepressants so it's about, to me, releasing a fast track, releasing emotion so that you can get back up there. And like I say, you're leaping out of bed and oh, wow, excited for the day. And, you know, then, then I think what happens is you get closer to your angelic community, whatever they are, you know, starseed family, if they're Palladian, Actorian, Sumerian, Atlantarian, Lumerian, um, um, Andromedan, you know, there's different, you know, different starseeds here, but you need to be connected with them and they'll show you your gifts. But but I think, you know, people just want to, oh, I need to know my gift now. But it doesn't happen like that. But, you know, what I can but say... But don't they go to, come to you and you say, uh, you know, uh, uh, Christopher, what's my gift? Yeah, they do. And, you know, I normally say, okay, uh, have a look at these things. First, I get them to connect their starseed family, sir, and go meditate with that. And then their gift is, you know, normally, well, you know, I normally ask them, okay, what really excites you? you know, if you could do anything in the world, forget about money, do anything in the world. Well, I love I love cooking, or I love healing, or I love meditate, I love something, you know. Right. They've always got something, but oh, but I can't make money out of that. And I've got to say, you know, 20 years ago, if someone had done a reading and said, you're going to be in America in about 20 years, you're going to be living off donations and running a healing ministry, I, I would have fell about laughing. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> What planet are you on? But do you know what? I'm here today doing exactly that, you know, and it's very successful. And I think it's successful because the main thing is getting with the ego and being raw and authentic. Just be you. You know, people change their name to Betty Light Language or Angelic, blah, blah, blah. You know, you just have to be you, you know. Um, I mean, I have no middle name. I'm just Christopher Macklin. I'm a commoner. <laughs> you're a com okay, got it. But you're also a doctor. Yeah, yeah, I got a PhD uh, thing. I did a thesis uh, with a seminary and, uh, you know, I did two theses actually, but that was part of the first book I did. It took me two and a half years to create and uh, investigations and, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, uh, but who cares about that? You know, it's just paper. <laughs> you know, who you are is inside, you know. And, uh, I, 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 and what you learned. know, we're in a, a pandemic now and um, everybody's concerned. Well, almost everybody. People, some people in Washington may not be as concerned about it as, as others. Uh, <laughs> um, COVID-19. Um, I mean, it's a real virus. We know that. We know it's contagious. We know that if you have a compromised immune system, you're going to go down. Yeah. Right? Can you help? Have you helped with people who have COVID-19? Well, there's two viruses. One's coronavirus, which has been around for about 30 years. It's a, it's a bad flu. And right. Most people die of it. It depends on your autoimmune. Uh, you know, if your autoimmune's strong, you're okay. You know, um, right. I always tell people, autoimmune needs exercise. So sometimes you need to catch stuff and go through it in order to build the autoimmune up. Because if you don't exercise it, it's going to get flat. You know, so um, again, this is, you know, go consult your doctor. Uh, but uh, my view on it is masks don't do it. You know, uh, I think, you know, if you're going to get it, you're going to get it. And, you know, masks to me is just like inhaling your own carbon dioxide all day is not good for you either. So, but the. But when you go out to the supermarket, if it's required, do you wear one? 
You don't go to the supermarket. <laughs> well, I do, actually. In our supermarket, yeah. Missouri is very chill because there's only 42 cases in Taney County, so uh, you can walk in the supermarket. Some people wear masks, some people don't. I, I don't personally wear a mask. But the COVID-19 is very different. <clears throat> it's nanotechnology bound with uh, HIV proteins, uh, bound with SARS. That's a very different ball game. And wearing a mask just won't touch it because nanotech sinks through the skin, sinks through the eyes, sinks through your, your scalp. It can sink through anywhere. If you've got that around you, you will get it, you know, and it's like uh, Morgellons. So it's it's like having Morgellons and um, and AIDS on steroids. That can kill you in seven days, depending on your RNA DNA. So we deal a lot with that as well. You know, we have a new protocol uh, that's really helping people, and it's actually uh, stripping out HIV, Agent Orange, Lyme, Morgellons out of the body in about 60 days wow. using a, a new technique called timeline splitting. So... Um, and it's in the book, you know, so, um, and that's, that. I mean, we're getting 20, 30 people on protocol every month because, you know, if you've got, if you've got Lyme disease, it's more, almost like the same as having AIDS, the same as Agent Orange, it does the same, it blows up, it blows up in the body, the autoimmune crashes because it can't cope, it can't find these stealth pathogens because they keep morphing, they're, they're called stealth pathogens, which is spirochetes, and they keep morphing and changing, autoimmune's trying to find them eventually it crashes in come cancers or something and you end up finished so it's a serious disease Lyme you know AIDS it's more or less the same it does almost right. the same thing and they're manufactured you know so it's and and I guess we we all have to be careful I mean the social distancing and things like that uh, consult your physician your doctor but at the same at the same time there are I guess there's an attitude that you can have that can also protect you. Wouldn't you agree with that? Or would you agree? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not going to get it, and you'll manifest that reality. <laughs> yeah. But, but again, being in a high vibrational state, you know, these things can't... If, you, if, if your DNA is robust against it... So let's take an example. Borrelia, which is the spirochete to Lyme disease, is in the chemtrails. So is Morgellons particles. And when they spray it, it's in everyone's body. So why right. doesn't everyone get Lyme disease? It depends how robust your DNA is. Uh, and how do you damage the DNA? Well, just ingest agrobacterium from GMO foods or from vaccines, and that'll do it. And then it allows the stuff to replicate. That's why some people get Lyme, some people don't. Well, I didn't get bitten by a tick. Oh, it's in the chemtrails, you know. So it's it's really interesting. So it's the same with COVID-19. COVID-19, if you call the weaponized one, that, that's that's got these HIV proteins. You know, people can have HIV but not get AIDS. Uh, so this stuff won't replicate in the body as long as your DNA is robust and and that's all about, you know, your DNA can be affected also by emotion. And your DNA is connected to your um, autoimmune, connected to everything else. So there's a whole slew of things. If you stay positive and you stay healthy and you make, you know, you keep your autoimmune up by, you know, making sure you get supplements or good food, uh, I think, you know, you're going to stay robust against most of this thing. Do you take, uh, do you take supplements? I do actually, yeah. I take, I take a few supplements. Good. All right. That's Always a take good vitamins. Thing. I mean, you know, I thought about going on, uh, you know, um, what do they call it? IV, you know, um, oh, the... C because that's really good, you know. But again, I'm not a doctor. Go consult your doctor. But truly, that's just my opinion. You know, I think right. the more vitamin C you can get in your body and boost your autoimmune. But I never get sick, you know. Never, right. ever get sick. And, never and vit sick. vitamin D is the other one that uh, people are saying, yeah. C and D. Uh, oh, yeah. What about talking to our angel guides? And I'm not even, I, I'm just picking that up. I, that something told me to ask that. Can we talk to our angel guides or do we need you to help us with that? Well, you can talk to your angel guides. What I, it, it's very interesting. When I first uh, realized I was born as a peculiar that being, there's, there's five of us here and we're here to do some big project. This project is the biggest we've ever done on this planet. And that's why I've come back for the last so many years, thousands of years, just to, you know, to come back, learn, learn, learn. But this is it. This is the big project. So when I first started talking to them, you know, uh, obviously I'd gone bankrupt. I was in a low space and I've meditated. Nothing happened. Meditate again. Oh, nothing happened. I did it for a month. Nothing was happening. Okay, I'm just going to listen, guys. I'm going to carry on. I don't care. You're going to connect to me eventually. And what they do is they don't, it sounds cool and it's not. It's just they don't kind of waste their time if people aren't going to actually stick with it. They want to connect to people who are really going to stick with it. So they want to see and meditate for a while and try and connect them. Eventually, as soon as they start connecting, things actually, wow, everything opens up and you start getting messages, you're getting downloads, uh, everything changes. 
So I think uh, it's one of those things, but, you know, what you need to do to learn what star seed you're from, what you need to do is just close your eyes and, you know, see which one really, um, really uh, hits you in the face. You know, like, oh, am I Palladian? Is my soul Palladian, yes or no? Uh, I mean, I can douse just, you know, I see a no in front of my eyes, so I can do that. But other people can use a dousing rod or whatever, whatever's good for you. Are you Actorian? Yes or no. Uh, Atlantarian, uh, Lumerian, uh, Syrian. You go through all, all of those, Andromeda. And, you know, once you realize, okay, yeah, I'm Andromeda, I'm Palladian, then start meditating. And, and you know, to me, meditating. And, and these are, like, these, these are, I, I'm, I didn't understand, Christopher, and that is uh, Andromedan from, like, Andromeda? Yeah, absolutely. They're, they're, okay. they're starseeds. They're all positive. They're all the positive ones, you know. Don't med- You know, my advice is don't meditate with the reptilian things. You know, the Luciferians or the Anunnaki, Draconians. Um, you know, Archons. They're all there to actually manipulate us, and they're part of this, um, you know, one world order connected to uh, all the, you know, the bigwigs. They they worship Lucifer, for example. You know, and it's all about greed and everything else. So, so you need to start, obviously stay away. Just you know, meditate with your Starsi family and they will connect with you. Once they connect with you, they'll start downloads. And downloads is where you know things and you say, how on earth do I know this? Or you get visions about it. You know, it's, it's absolutely amazing. It'll blow your pantaloons off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, I promised to keep you for about a half hour and we're, we're out of time. Will you come back sometime? Will you come back in a couple of weeks? Yeah, that would be great. Bless your heart. You know, you're uh, terrific. And when we come back the next time, we'll talk about the, I want to know more about the, um, the, uh, the pyramids. Uh, years ago, somebody gave me, told me, gave me a, a small pyramid and I kept a razor in there, a razor blade in there. And I never had to replace it. No, no, they've, to... Got, they've got uh, amazing. I mean, that's the thing about sacred geometry. It's amazing qualities. So yeah, we could talk about them next time. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. I, that would be great. Hold on a second. I'm going to wrap us up here. Uh, our guest has been uh, Christopher Maitland, and he's got a book out. He's got all kinds of books out. So uh, the um, your website, let's start with that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you can either go to ChristopherMacklinMinistries.com. Macklin is M-A-C-K-L-I-N, Ministries.com. Uh, it points to the same one. We now call it GlobalEnlightenmentProject.com. So uh, we actually changed it. It's it's a registered charity uh, under the ministry, but the uh, the Global Enlightenment is the new project we're doing, which is the big pyramid project, which you can talk about next time. So if you go there, if you want help, you know, you can send an email if you want to info at ChristopherMacklinMinistries.com or just phone us up. You know, if anyone wants help, you know, we're here to help. We're here to get you back to your sovereign self if you're struggling in life. And so many people are, you know, so. Got it. And of course, the uh, the website's been up throughout this entire interview. So be sure to check it out. Take a look at it. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Check us out too at LateNightHealth.com. And we have all kinds of things going uh, there. And of course, you can listen to us uh, on all kinds of podcasting sites like iTunes, uh, 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 Spreaker, and and many, many more. All of those are listed at LateNightHealth. Christopher and I will be back. I promise. I'm making you come back, right? <laughs> but I have to hold on. Uh, I'm Mark Allen. Have a great day. We'll be back next. Nice.